Dollhouse, another focus on video. I thought today we would do a focus on the Filofaxi One Year Planner. Uh, this is probably my favorite one year planner that I've ever used. Um, I've used several. I don't always use them for forward planning. I've seen tons of videos, and this is so smart, where people use that yearly layout to plan, you know, trips, vacations. Um, you know, family outings, things like that. The only reason I really don't use it like that, at least you won't see it on there yet for this year, is because things like when we can take off on a vacation or on a long day trip in the spring especially, is dependent on the kids' school schedule, which I obviously do have, but it's also dependent on the hockey season. If these guys do playoffs and finals, then the hockey season is obviously much longer than just the middle of April when the regular season ends. And I can't really plan anything because it's feasible that Mike could be doing a lot of hockey stuff until like into July even. So you don't see a lot of forward planning on here, just bear that in mind. Most of the forward planning you'll see is stuff to do with the kids. Um, but I just like it because the boxes on the Filofaxi One Year Planner are just big enough for me to use abbreviations and keep track of all sorts of things. I pull from my monthly chart in my DIY fish pages to fill in my yearly planner. So at the end of the month, if I haven't already done it sporadically through the month, I will look at that monthly chart on my DIY fish pages and fill out you know, what days I did any writing, what days I did tech coding, what days I you know, worked on projects, you know, websites I'm working for, for businesses and for friends and whatnot. It gives me a nice view yearly of what I did when, you know, when maybe work times fell off and I wasn't doing as much, you know, why. You'll see that instantly, you know, during Christmas break, spring break, summer break. I, I don't get as much work done just because the house is full of people and they all need to be driven places. <laughs> so that is going to be remedied shortly. We have a couple of them going to be driving pretty soon. I'm so excited. So I will show you guys what I use my Filofaxi One Year Planner for. If you have any recommendations, things I could do differently, um, questions and comments and all that good stuff, same as always, let me know. And I will put the links to, or the link to the, uh, the planner pages that you can download. They're free, they're from Filofaxi. If you've never visited there, turn this off and go look now and then come back and watch this. Steve has done a beautiful job with the website. It is chock full of information every single day. All of the inserts are free to download. They're all listed together. It's very well explained. It's easy to find what you want. And because they're free, you can try something and, you know, give it a week or two. And if you don't like what you're trying, try something else. So um, go take a peek at that and then come back and watch this. Okay? I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Okay, guys. Here is a look at my Filofaxi yearly plan planner or yearly calendar. <clears throat> um, it prints out um, on one Oh, I have to think now. A4 page. Um, because I live in the States, I couldn't just go get a package of A4 paper. So I did go to uh, Kinko's FedEx uh, and have them cut me a ream of uh, the correct size paper. And then you just print this out and it shows you right where to trim it. So it prints on one sheet. And I will put the links for where to download this uh, down below. So here's what the whole year looks like. As I said in the intro, I don't really use it for forward planning too much except for marking um, any times that the kids are away or off of school, whether it's one day off of school or a break like winter break or spring break or summer break. Um, I haven't filled this in yet for this year past May uh, because the other schedule I put on here is Mike's hockey schedule when there are home games and away games and I only filled it in through the scheduled season because this whole portion in here could change greatly depending on playoffs and finals and whatnot and a lot you know depends on whether or not he's in town and you know how long he's gone when he's out of town. So I use it for that type of forward planning. Otherwise, I use it for past tracking. So what I generally do at the end of the month is I will, let me show you on my February calendar, all of the stuff that I track on my February, or my monthly calendar, pardon me, my monthly chart, Things like what days I did coding, what days I worked on websites for certain companies, um, bills I don't keep on the yearly planner, those stay on each monthly chart, um, but a lot of my stuff. So, you know, work stuff and writing stuff for the blog, um, 
all goes onto the yearly calendar just for tracking purposes. I color code it, it matches the color coding in the rest of my planner. So the red H's and A's are home games and away games for Mike for hockey. The blue stuff is all the boys, so the days they don't have school or days that they're gone. And then anytime I make a blog post, that's all my stuff is in pink <clears throat> or purple, pardon me. So any place it says CH, that's an abbreviation for my website, that's days that I know I made some sort of post. Uh, anything that's in purple, um, if it's T, that's tech coding, and if it's other letters, then that is an abbreviation for whatever company or person that I happen to have probably worked on a website for. Um, and that is pretty much it. The nice thing about this being that each month I archive my DIY fish pages. I don't keep anything, um, like right now February is still in here because it's uh, the first Monday after the beginning of March. It's March 3rd and I have not pulled out my February calendar yet. I'll probably do that today. So this comes out and while I have all this tracked on here, I take this out and I archive it in a separate binder. So having the entire year right in front of me where I can see where I did what and where I can look ahead and see when the kids are gone or when they have an extended break, like over here they've got spring break. I know I'm probably not going to have a whole lot of pink or purple going on in this week just because you know, we'd be busy doing stuff with the kids. And I can plan for that then. If I take a glimpse at this really fast and look at the whole month of, say, March, while I'm filling in that monthly calendar for March, I'll remember, oh yeah, the kids have spring break that week. I can put their whole school schedule for the entire year on here. Uh, the only thing I never put on here is the last day of school. And if I do put it on here, I put it in pencil because especially this year, they get uh, five snow days that they have to make up if they which they haven't used up in years, and this year they did. In fact, they've used six. So their school year is extended by four more days. So one day they would have had off uh, actually today, but because they had snow days, they were in school today. So their last day is going to move. So I don't put that on there. So that is how, you know, the forward planning happens as far as when their last day of school is going to be, when their breaks are. <clears throat> The other thing that I do use this for is I wrote my 2014 goals on the flip side of this. Uh, it is marked where to fold it and I wrote them on here just because I look at this a lot. So having it, you know, appointments that I need to remember, I'll throw on a little post-it note and put on this side. And usually I do that, you know, if I'm scheduling a dentist appointment six months in advance, I'll jot it down on my daily page. When I get home, I will put it on a post-it over here right next to my yearly calendar. And um, like last September, uh, Mike's license plates needed to be renewed. So obviously I know next September we'll have to do it again. So I throw it on here so that as I come closer to September, I'll see that and I'll remember and I can put it on that monthly chart for that month. Um, having the goals page right here, I see it all the time. Between looking at my yearly calendar and looking at my contents, I see this a lot. So it just helps remind me so things aren't quite falling through the cracks like they used to. So that is it. That is the look at the yearly chart. If you guys have questions or comments or anything like that, just let me know and all the applicable links will be down below. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye.